Hey, it's Raktar, and I'm playing Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Right at the very end of the last episode, Shad sent me a letter about the update, and basically, he could find us here, but it was a disaster, how disappointing, but if I let something so small get to me, my dear father will scoff at me from beyond the mortal coil. I'm going back to the sanctuary in Kakarogi Village to see if I can't find another leader. Certainly hope that if you find any more information, you will share it. Well, see, that's perfect, because I had already, I didn't open that letter, because... I didn't know if I should show it on camera or not. But yeah, anyways, I figured I would come back to Kakariko Village anyway, because I was like, well, I found all the statues. I didn't see Shad anywhere while I was looking for them. So it crossed my mind that, yep, he would be here. And of course, Zelda confirms my suspicions. Shad is downstairs. He wants to jump my bones. We're about to get it on old school. And now I finally got a book with all the text complete, the filled skybook. I've brought filled skybook for you to translate to death. Is that book from the last time? Hmm. Are there more letters in the word in uh in the word than the last time I looked at this? How did you investigate the Rector? This is amazing. Now, this must be the word that we need. Let's try it immediately. All right. Tell Dude Is he actually speaking Japanese? Dude, even though that most of the stuff in this game is gibberish, it sounds like that guy is actually speaking Japanese right now. It has taken on the same shape as the other statues! And I thought we'd, uh, we'd solve the last of the riddles. Blast! How confounding! Dude, don't worry, I can move it now. I must apologize, Ragtar. I need to cool off a tad before I mull the problem further. No! Stay here! I can solve the problem. I've got the Dominion Rod! Alright, whatever. I'll just do it without you, Shad. We don't need you. I'll just do it on my own. Maybe once this happens, I can walk that over to Shad and be like, Shad! I have the statue! Nope. Let's go talk to him and be like, Shad, it's moved. He probably won't react. Blast it. This thing is... Oh, nope. Okay. I guess he won't react until I go into the room. He, I bet that once I go into the room, he'll, like, follow me in here and be like, Rektar, I noticed that you moved the thing, so I followed you in here. And, oh my gosh. This is music it is intense. It's got a big, deep, fat, thick note under it. Rektar! How in blazes did you move that statue and what's this? What's this? A statue everywhere? Amazing, spectacular! This must be the sky cannon I read about in my father's notes! I knew that my intuition was onto something when I led me here, but how can one use this to get to the city in the sky? Dude, I think personally that it's quite obvious what we're gonna do... Midna, before you bother me a bunch, let me look around this room, see if there's anything significant. Alright, there's not. She's gonna be able to teleport it to the lake for me. A cannon? What do you plan to do with this, Rektar? Warp! To Lake Hylia. Except that guy's still watch- Oh. I guess we have to... A cannon, huh? Oh. We have to get this guy out of here. Shad, I'm gonna be honest with you. You gotta leave. Ah. Perhaps I'm in your way? Well, forgive me for not realizing. I should just disappear at times like this, really. So, let me know the results another time, Rektar. What a nice guy! He realizes that I've got some horrible secret that I can't must keep from everybody. Let's see here. Yes, yes, yes. Cannon expert. I know a cannon expert. He lives at Lake Hylia, down all along the world's trenchers. I wonder if I put him off. Yes, you did, Midna. You always do put everyone off. Now it's time to warp the motherfucker. All right. Yep. Nobody will see to Lake Hylia, home of the cannon expert. I don't like that there's still a mark on my map showing me where all the little, um, owl statues are. That makes me unhappy that there's a mark on my map showing where the owl statues are, because I like my map to be nice and clean. Wait, are we gonna be able to warp- okay. And I'm gonna go with it. Cool. Cannonville, USA. We're about to find out how grateful dude. I hope this guy is grateful that we're bringing him a cannon that's way better than his old cannon. Which, by the way, remember in, like, one of the very first episodes of the series, probably, like, 40 or almost 50 episodes ago, I had a time when this dude had an option in his text where he offers, like, there's an option in the text about repairing a cannon, and I was like, oh, don't worry about that yet, that has nothing to do with anything, and I asked him about it, and he was sort of like, eh, there's a cannon, I don't know what you're talking about, there's no cannon. But now, finally, the time to repair the cannon should be here, because he should be ready. Alright, dude. Hey, buddy! 
I noticed you have a shit sweet cannon. Oh, is that yours? Hey, buddy, I never looked the. I never thought you'd be so hooked on fascination. Fan, wait, fantastication that you try to build your own cannon. So are you gonna give me a tour or what? Looks like you have a serious rig over there. Way more serious than yours. My cannon's got legs. Although you don't really know that yet from looking at it. Whoa, it's kind of retro, huh? And there's no ignition device, so you can't even use it. Listen, buddy, I suppose I might be able to fix it for you. I mean, maybe. That is, if you pay me 300 rupees. Let's just say yes, even though I don't have... Uh, you're gonna have to pay for it. Well, I gotta get back to work here, buddy. <gasps> I gave all my rupees to the Goron Reparations of Destruction Fund. And now I have no rupees. I have to get a quick alt a quick and alternate solution for this, dude. This solution is a two-parter. Part number one is exchange one of these bugs to get some initial venture capital that I can use to get money in other ways. And hopefully, because I brought a pair, she'll give me a nice big orange rupee. Perfect, I'm one-third of the way there, but... You know what they say, you gotta spend money to make money. Actually, I already know the location of another orange rupee. I know you have bugs. Oh, I did I have another bug that I didn't give her? That's another pair, which should give me another orange rupee! Beautiful. You may remember from the before times that there was this little layer down here that I was unable to complete my destiny because I did not have enough cashola in the old Wallatuski, and I basically had to leave this poor, helpless 100 rupee piece behind. So with two completed pairs and another 100 rupee piece, that brings me back up to the 300 rupee mark of justice, so I will be meeting y'all back at Lake Hylia. You see, my original plan had been to play the mini game and get the box that I had left behind right there, and there's some boxes over there that I can still fly to, but now that it turned out that I was able to collect the rupees between Agatha and that rupee that I just left sitting behind, I can now choose special repairs. Mm, yeah, sure. How about 300 rupees? I can do it. I got your 300, man. Now you better fix my thing and ho luckily it's only going to take a sec. Oh, and now the day and night passes really fast. Dude, what if they had been like... Come back in four... Okay, it's been five days now. Six days. What if they'd been like, come back in six days? But because you can't change the day and night, you just had to wait. That would be horrible. That would be absolutely terrible, but it doesn't matter now. You know something I actually noticed a few days slash weeks ago about going... trying to get time to pass? If you travel in between zones where time passes, it seemed to me like time passes a little faster, so... you can possibly use that to your advantage if you're playing this game in the future. But, now I've gotten this guy's 300 roops, and I can freaking ride this- Okay, you hookshot into it. Well, you know what? I got nothing else going on in the game right now. Might- might well be I should- Oh, and Uko is here to show me how to use it, or Uko's here to go with me. Yep. Alright, Uko. I love this cannon, by the way. It's got an amazing animation. Because, of course, it can't shoot you high enough on its own, which means that it's gotta- Oh, I thought it jumped. Oh, that would have been super cool if it jumped to shoot you, but whatever. I really like that it's a cannon on feet. It's really cool. But this actually brings us, oddly enough, or not that oddly, to a dungeon all its own. And hopefully Uko will just come with me right off the bat here. That would be great, Uko. Phew, gracious, we made it back finally. Welcome, adventure. This is the size guy city, the Uka. Erm, um, since you came all this way, I guess I can give you a tour of the city. Eek. Oh, and, of course, there's a freaking dragon here! And a dungeon. It looks like we're not playing Legend of Zelda anymore, we're playing Dungeons and Dragons! Alright, Uko, I get it. You're scared, you can stop making all the weird Oh, what? Is that another? Oh yeah, they're a family. Alright. That is such an annoying sound, please stop. Oh goodness, brave adventure, you won't believe it. There's a dragon raging outside the city walls. Oh, I'm terribly worried about everyone, I'm going to check in that shop for survivors. Okay, there's a shop here, that's cool. But damn it, Uko! You sack of shit! Uko is sort of a sack of shit. He... oh! Oh, they've got their own cannon up here! That seems very dangerous to shoot downward, so at least that's how I know I'm gonna be able to get down... And oh, I forgot the wind! And I don't have my iron beats on. Is there anything sweet over here? Nope. Just an area to get blown around by the wind, I suppose. So now I, I guess I should go check out the shop, too. Hopefully, 
Uko will stop being a jerk, and if I go check out the shop, Uko will gladly and friendly volunteer to come help me out and not just kind of screw me around and bring me up to the sky with him slash her, the gender-neutral Uko. And, ooh, wow, their technology was sweet. Look at their technology. Seriously, they have, like, these crazy pods. I wonder what those crazy pods even do. All right, Uko, you come with me. I need to teleport. Sorry for earlier adventure. Oh, but you're planning on walking around the city and taking it in, right? I'm worried about the others, and this is an emergency. I can't just stand around waiting. Please take me too. I won't help you. I won't help you warp to the surface, but I will bring you back to the shop anytime. Okay, that's cool. Uko is now with you. She's a reliable friend. Loudy, we know the deal with Uko, but who will sell me stuff? Is it you? Hello, friend. Let's see what your shop. I can't understand. Oh, okay, cool. They speak non. They speak Hylian. You understand me? See something you want? Um, whoa, what is that? Oh, it's lantern oil. For some reason, I thought that was something cool, and it turned out to be something not cool. Well, I don't have any money anyway, because I gave it all to that goddamn stickler of a cannon fixer. He tricked me into giving me all of my sweet, sweet cashola, and now my life has been ruined. Which means now it's time to venture forth into the temple, except for the fact that it's really freaking windy. The wind actually plays sort of a role in this dungeon in several places. Like, what'll happen? Obviously on this bridge it doesn't make a difference because the wind is blowing backward, but there's several bridges where you really need to make use of the iron boots because the wind is blowing sideways and you can get blown out of these like little destroyed spots on the walls, which as you can imagine is very bad because, you know, you die till you're dead. Now let's see if this... My, oh, what the... Come on. There we go. I was like, that first arrow was so accurate. The game was just embarrassed at how accurate I was. And so it didn't want to allow me to be that accurate. Oh, and now when you finally get up to here, it introduces you to City in the Sky. I actually think, wow, you know what I never really considered before? Now that I've played Skyward Sword, maybe the City in the Sky has something to do with, like... Skyward Sword, although I'll never know because it looks like it's all fallen to pieces, so you can't really tell if it's all one big cohesive piece or not. And, wow, plenty of Ukins, Uka, here. Oh, you use- okay, they won't talk to you, so you use them like chickens, right? Let's see if- let's just test it over a short distance. Yep, okay. Oh, wow, and the ground goat falls from your feet. Well, anyways- I do believe, actually, that this is a pretty fantastic time for me to end this episode of Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess right here. In the next episode, I will begin the ridiculous and insane exploration of that Uka is walking on the fucking wall. Drugs! I'm on drugs. All right, so yeah, anyways, I'll be exploring the city and the sky. This has been Ragdar. Thank you for watching.